Deanna here with UC Woods and Epoxy. We're heading out to a client's house to fix a table that was poured over a year ago and has some major problems. First problem is it's still sticky, which has caused a bunch of flies to inhabit this table permanently. The edge tuck tape was left on for over the this past year and so the edges are also very sticky and that tape will not come off at this point. The table is also extremely unlevel to the top. What we're going to begin with is removing as many flies and other creatures as we could possibly find with a chisel and a mallet. The reason we went this route is because the tabletop was so sticky there was no way we could sand these out. Um, after we started or after we finished getting all of the bugs that we could possibly find out, we took to the edges with that same chisel and mallet to try to get off some of that extra tape and really uneven um, dried epoxy in some of the areas that were dried. And some of the extra sticky stuff um, from the uncured resin from those sides. A lot of people thought that they would cut this off instead, but to take a saw blade through this uncured resin would just be a nightmare. And so for us, we went the chisel and mallet route. And then we took our sander to it to just to sand what areas that we could sand that were dry enough to sand off. As we began to clean off the tabletop with our rubbing alcohol, we had to wipe it extremely fast because as you can see, it'll actually grab the paper towel and leave particles behind. And then we go ahead and run our tape dam so that the epoxy stays in the table once we pour it. One way you can prevent uncured resin is by mixing it thoroughly. And so in this video, you see us double potting our epoxy, which just means we mixed it in one bucket thoroughly and then we dumped it into a clean new bucket and continue to mix it. That way everything that was on the bottom of the first bucket then becomes on the top of the second bucket. And so then you really don't have any issues of unmixed or uncured resin. After that, it was a simple process of pouring it out, spreading with a notched trowel. We tap out our trowel lines with a gloved hand and then we heat it to pop bubbles. We came back on the second day and we saw, you can see the spider um, and some of bugs that we did miss, but our top coat leveled out really well. And what it really did was gave our edges something to dry to. And so we were actually able to sand this table finally and then wipe it down thoroughly with uh, alcohol to make sure it was really clean prior to pouring an additional flood coat. Once again, we've run our tape dam in order to keep our epoxy in place. You'll notice I have Play-Doh. This one main corner here in the back had a lot of issues with um, epoxy leaking off the table because the bottle caps there aren't thoroughly covered. And so if you use Play-Doh, Play-Doh will generally provide a sturdier uh, support to that tape as well as Play-Doh can also be used to uh, plug a leak that any epoxy form may have if you're doing a river table. And so I tried to also pre-fill some of those lower spots with some epoxy prior to pouring the main amount of epoxy. And you can see already that Play-Doh is already starting to give because that spot is so low. Um, but we just did the best that we could to keep the epoxy in the table. Again, we spread with our notch trowel, we tap out our trowel lines, and then we heat to pop bubbles. Um, once you're ready, you can pull your tape dam and let that epoxy flow over. And again, we were really trying to make sure that we don't have any more of those sticky edges um, that the client had from the very beginning. And so that way they can touch it and lean up against it without getting wet epoxy all over themselves. Since this was the final layer that we were gonna be doing for these clients, we did make sure that all of the bubbles were popped as, as much as possible. Um, our epoxy really doesn't have any issues with micro bubbles and things like that. So um, we just wanted it to level out and be a beautiful mirror-like finish for them. And you can see here the difference between the beginning and the end and now they have an actual usable table that they're planning on keeping forever and laughing at the boys that made this for them uh kind of on a whim and there's our cool spider so hopefully 
this video will help you uh, fix your own table if you have one.